This was something that happened when I was driving across the state to visit and reconnect with an old friend. I was doing the driving by myself, which I had only ever done one other time. This meant that I would have to keep myself entertained as I made the nine-hour drive. I packed myself plenty of snacks and drinks so that I wouldn't have to stop, which worked out for most of the trip. However, towards the tail end of my drive, I started to really crave fries. I could tell that I was going to need some more caffeine anyways, so I decided to find a quick place to eat and refuel. I stopped at a fast food chain that was popular in the Midwest to grab something to eat and a soda. It wasn't busy when I arrived, but there were a few people sitting in the lobby and eating, and I saw a few workers behind the counter. I approached as I normally do, greeting the person at the register, but I noticed immediately that they did not look to be in a good mood. In fact, they looked pretty irritated. I hoped it wasn't because of me, so I tried to be as nice as possible. I was working retail at the time, so I completely understood how bad some days could get working with the public. The man at the counter quickly said in a hurried manner, What can I get you? So I started giving my order, and when he was repeating it, he stumbled over his words and then also said the wrong item. I politely corrected it, which made him look down, and he started jamming buttons with his finger, and then loudly sighed and apologized. I giggled slightly and told him that it wasn't a big deal and was trying to be nice. I told him that I appreciated him repeating back the order for reasons just like that. It's amazing how far a little kindness can go. He then sighed again and told me that he was just having a bad day. I apologized, told him that it was okay though, and that we were all allowed to have our bad days. Apparently, this was enough for him to give me a quick synopsis of everything that he was dealing with, which was definitely a lot for one person, and I just tried to be polite. This all was happening while I paid and stood there with my receipt for a moment. After a few minutes and our conversation winding down, he said that he appreciated me listening to him rant, and that he would bring me my food so I could go sit down. I said thank you and went and found a seat. I sat at one of those bar tables with the stools that faced towards the parking lot, with my back to the counter. Enough time passed for me to text my friend to let them know where I was at, and respond to a few other messages, when the same guy brought over the tray with my food. I thanked him and he walked away, so I just began enjoying my meal. I was probably about halfway through it when I heard a familiar voice approach my spot from the side and say hi to me. It was that same guy. He asked if he could sit with me for a moment while he was on break. I did think it was a little weird, but I wasn't going to be there much longer, so I told him that it was fine. That is when the guy just unloaded. He was talking about how he was stressed because his car broke down. He thought his girlfriend was going to leave him. His parents were pressuring him about his schooling because he wasn't passing all of his classes in college because he was getting burned out, and he didn't think that he wanted to be in that field anymore. Then, he topped it all off with something along the lines of, and... I have to pick up shifts here because my worthless boss's kid can't be bothered to work their own damn shift. That last part he said a bit louder and looked towards the back, like he was wanting to make sure that somebody heard it. These were all definitely terrible things to have to deal with, and I did feel bad for him, but in that exact moment, I had no clue what to do or say other than... Wow, I'm so sorry. He just stared at me and let out a heavy sigh. You know what? It's alright. At least I got it off my chest, which helped more than you know. <laughs> I told him that I was glad I was able to help him and that everything would work out in the end. He then stood up and thanked me and asked me for my name. 
Hell, I didn't even live in that state, and I would probably never see him again, so I told him honestly what it was. He told me his name, which I think was something like Mac or Mark, something like that. Then he walked back to the kitchen. I had a small moment at that point, thinking, well, that was something. <laughs> and I went back to my meal, preparing to call my friend when I left to tell them about it. I was just about finished, but was distracted doing something on my phone, when I heard someone from behind me shouting, which startled me. I just heard someone shout, Shut the f up! I turned around to see Mark, and who I assumed to be the manager, because they had on a different colored shirt, standing in the kitchen. The manager had his hand up in a manner like he was shrugging, while Mark was throwing his hands around angrily. The manager was talking a lot quieter, as I could only hear Mark shouting. It's now gotten the attention of the others in the lobby and the two other workers on the other side of the kitchen, and after a short conversation between the two, I heard Mark grab something to his right, and before I could blink, he had swung it at the manager. The next thing I remember was hearing the agonizing screams coming from the manager, while the two workers on the other side are also now yelling at Mark. I quickly got up and ran over to the counter where I saw the horrifying scene. Mark was now on top of the manager, and swinging this hot fry basket at his face. I was frozen in place. I knew what I needed to do, which was call 911, but I couldn't move. I just stood there horrified by the situation unfolding in front of me. I finally did come to my senses when one of the other employees jumped on Mark and was fighting to get him off of the manager. I went back to my seat to grab my phone and called 911, and thankfully they were able to get my location because I barely knew where I was. They asked me to stay there so that they could talk to me, so I had to stay there even longer to wait for them. A couple other customers had run out the door while one of them tried helping the manager by applying cool towels to their face and arms. Somehow, he was still conscious, or had regained consciousness, but his moans of pain... I will never forget that. To this day, they still haunt me. Meanwhile, after the other employees got him off the manager, Mark ran towards the back and I didn't see him again. I wanted to do something, but I was scared that he may come back out and try to do something again to all of us standing there with him. I just stood by the door hoping to see the cops or an ambulance soon. After what felt like an eternity, they did finally show up. The cops went in first and immediately went to the back, and then the EMTs came in and started caring for the manager. I then had to tell them everything that I saw, as well as everyone else that was still there. Apparently there was another exit out the back, and Mark had left through it, and he was long gone. Unfortunately, I wish that I could tell you more about this, but... That was pretty much it. After all that, and I was given permission to leave, I got sick and then called my friend from my car, now shaking and crying. I explained everything to them, and when we couldn't talk anymore, I called my sister and told her. There was no way that I could finish this drive by myself with my own thoughts. I definitely needed a distraction. I only had about three hours left to go, which was enough time to get it all out, calm down, and then even pull over to take a quick, much-needed power nap. I got to my friend's place late that night, and after a few drinks, I crashed. I was thankful that I was with good company after that because the thoughts and sounds kept circling my mind, and definitely made it hard to sleep for a few nights. I have no idea of the conditions of the manager or if the Mark guy was ever caught, but I just hope that both of them got the right help they desperately needed. Oh, and if I'm ever on a road trip like that, I only do the drive-through now. <laughs>